Well, good morning. I'm Don Ricci. I'm the pastor of Trinity Family Church here. I want to welcome you into Friday morning's devotion. I so appreciate you joining me today. We're going to share a little bit of the word to keep us keep us focused on the right thing, keep our minds on the Lord, keep our uh, spirits and hearts encouraged, keep our minds encouraged, you know, just uh, always having our minds on what truly is important in life, and that is God's word. Friend, God's word has the answer for every single thing that we will ever encounter, every problem we'll ever have. It doesn't matter what it is, friends, God's word can bring us to victory regardless of what's taking place in our life. Praise the Lord. Again, thank you for joining me this morning. I want to share something with you as a devotion this morning. If you want to look with me to Romans chapter 10, for title's sake this morning, uh, not that we have to, but we're just going to talk about heart and mouth. Heart and mouth. And you'll understand where we're coming from right as we read our text this morning. Notice he says here in Romans 10, beginning with verse 6, he says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you see where I got my title from? Heart and mouth. In three verses, right one behind another, verse 8, verse 9, and verse 10, are talking about heart and mouth, our heart and our mouth. You know, we talked about <clears throat> some time back in um, in our faith series, actually when we first started out in our faith series teaching the very basics, we talked about how that uh, to walk in faith, that the word has to be in two places in our in our life. And not just one, it won't work if you're, if faith is just in one place. It has to be in two places. And that's what these verses are saying right here. The word has to be in your heart and the word has to be coming out of your mouth. See, you don't speak doubt and unbelief. You don't speak what the world says. You don't speak evil. You don't speak negative things. You speak what the word of God says. That's why the Bible tells us over in Proverbs, you know, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. See, speaking of the importance of speaking there. But see, what we're talking about here, to, re to be born again and to receive uh, the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to receive healing for our bodies, to receive financial uh, aid, uh, financial blessings, uh, relationships, situations on our job, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We receive it the same way. We put the word in our heart. And then we get an agreement with what that word says about our situation. And then we speak that out of our heart. In other words, our mouth agrees with what we have put in our heart. And that's what brings about the changes that we so need in our life. So you see, it's always the with the heart that man believes. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. But you know, he's got to be stressing here. I mean, this 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 is, has to be so important, or he, the Apostle Paul would not feel the need to stress this, see, and he's writing this again under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but in three verses, just one right after another, see, and see, this was a letter. Uh, Paul did not write these these letters in chapters and verses. This is done at the uh, the translators did this to make it easier to read. But see, this was just the letter, see. So it's like Paul just one right after another talking about that the word of God has to be in two places and that it's with the heart man believes unto righteousness and it's with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, you cannot be born again by just receiving the word in your heart. 
You're not born again until you confess Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. Well, you, you can confess Jesus with your Savior and Lord, but if you haven't first put that word into your heart, then you're not going to be able to believe what Jesus did for you, that he died for you, that he arose again the third day for you, that he not only bore your sins, but that he also bore your sicknesses and your diseases. You can't believe that really in your heart until you put the word in there because that's what brings the faith that gives us the enablement to believe. So when you believe something with your heart and you confess it with your mouth, friends, that's how it becomes real to you. See, if you'll put, if you stay in the word and, and in regarding maybe a specific situation in your life, if you'll find scripture that covers your need, like if it's healing or finances, you know, whatever, find scripture that covers, that promises you that God wills for you to have these things. And when you find that, you put that word in your heart, you read it and read it and read it. You think about it, you meditate on it, and then you start getting in agreement with that and you start speaking that out of your mouth. Thank you, Lord, that the healing power of God is at work in my body right now. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that by his stripes I am healed. See, see, you say that even though there may still be sickness and pain in your body. See, you're agreeing with the word of God over and above what the senses are saying. And that's why the Bible tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight or by our senses. So you can't receive from God walking by your senses. So you receive from God walking by faith. See, and Abraham, you know, did that. See, he considered not his body dead as far as reproducing a child. Neither did he confess the deadness of Sarah's womb. She was barren. But God said, you're going to have a child. So see, if he considered the sense realm, then he said, this can't happen. This is totally impossible, see. And it was impossible in the natural realm. But see, Abraham wasn't, he wasn't demanding to stay in the natural realm. He was willing to believe God. When it says that he didn't consider his body nor Sarah's body being dead, well, if he didn't consider that, what did he consider? It had to be the Word of God. Well, see, that's what you and I have to consider in regards to what we have and what we need in this life. I want to show you something by example here in uh, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12. Uh, let me begin with verse 11. It says, But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. But watch verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now, friends, notice it says here, by his own blood he entered in. How many times? Once. See, he didn't need to do it twice and three times, and four times, or a dozen times, see, he didn't need to do that, he entered in one time, see, into, into the holy of holies, into the holy place, and that's, and he obtained eternal redemption for us, see, the Bible teaches us that he did it once and for all, see, Jesus is never going to have to do that again, He's never going to have to go to the cross again. He's never going to have to enter into the holies, uh, to the holy place like that, and for our, you know, to purchase our redemption. No, friends, he purchased our redemption one time, and that was enough for all time, for all generations, for every man and woman, boy and girl that would ever be born into this world. That the price for redemption has already been paid. Jesus only paid it, and only needed to pay it one time. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 10, which was our text right there, tells us how we obtain the reality of our salvation. And it is by believing with our heart and confessing with our mouth. What are we believing with our heart? We're believing that Jesus died for our sins, according to the scriptures. We're believing that Jesus rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. See, so he purchased our sins in his own body, see, and he so in essence again he took what he took what we needed and he put it on himself so that we could have what he has. See, he exchanged his right standing, see, for our 
uh, lack of right standing. So see, now we are the righteousness of God in Christ, all because of what he has done for us. So again, you remember last Tuesday, we were talking about Brother Hagin's little book called In Him, where he talked about scriptures that had that phrase in it, in him, in whom, or in Christ, and how that we were to read those and, and write them down, you know, and meditate on them and confess those those verses that they belong to you, whether it's whether they are reality right now or not. You get in agreement with what God's word says by faith. You put that in your heart and then you speak that out of your mouth. And see, when you do that, it will become a reality to you. It's easier to believe something when you put the word in your heart and confess it out of your mouth. Faith's confessions create realities. Remember that, friends. Write that down if you have to right now and, and, and meditate on that right there. Faith's confessions create realities realities. See, you need some realities to take place in your life. You don't want it to remain in the realm of the Spirit, as we talked about Tuesday. You need it to manifest in in now. Well, see, your put, believing the Word and confessing with your mouth will create realities, cause them to come to pass in this life. You, When you read these verses and you see in Christ, in Him, you see these things that belong to you, then friends, just confess, this is mine. This is who I am, and this is what I have. And friends, when you do that, it will become a reality to you. See, it's already real in the spirit realm. It's already there. Remember Tuesday where we read that God has blessed us with all blessings in the realm of the spirit. He's already blessed us with everything we're ever going to need. Well, see, we just need to agree with that and keep speaking that they belong to me. They're mine now by faith in Jesus' name. And friends, they will become a reality to you even in this physical realm. Well, praise God. Thank you for joining me again this Friday morning for this devotion. I trust it's been a benefit to you and a great help. Have a wonderful weekend. I sure do love you.